Monday, Labor Day, Ken and I went and spent some time with a friend of ours named Gaia. Now, Gaia worked for CBS for decades, decades. She's won every award (laughs) there is, but she is the most humble person ever. Her light shines so bright. I love being around her. She's so mentoring and encouraging, and I always feel so, I don't know, like it's just like her positivity reflects onto me, and it's just so joyful. Now, I saw Gaia at the wedding we went to, and she invited Ken and I to uh, go to her church that she attends up here. They're having a carnival today. Now, Gaia lives in New York City. That's where her primary home is. And she has a small home up here, but a lot of acreage. And she said she just needs it to get away from the city. She needs it just to kind of come up here and like, you know, recenter herself. And it just seems like it just works because she's beautiful. (laughs) Whenever I'm with Gaia, I'm kind of the naughty one because I ask her, she's worked with everyone. She's worked with Martha Stewart, she's worked with Gimbel, she's worked with David Letterman, and I always want to know like who's really nice and who's like not so nice. <laughs> I'm like, I'm terrible influence. <laughs> but um, anyway, she knows she knows everyone in that industry. But despite that, she's just so down to earth and I just I love being around her. Now, Gaia also owns the Dandelion Inn here in Cooperstown as an investment property. And she mainly rents it out to the Dreams Park uh, during the season when the Little League teams come here and they play at the Dreams Park. She also rents it out to some of the owners of the baseball major league teams. This is our friend's house that she rents out during the Dreams Park where all the kids come up and play baseball. If you've ever been to the Dreams Park, the McDonald's that's there, it's just catty corner to that. It's right across the street. Location, location, location. (laughs) And, um, but anyway, uh, we met Gaia through mutual friends here in Cooperstown, and I just feel like I've known her my whole life. And spending time with her is always a joy. So let me turn the camera around. I'll show you our time spent together. We are meeting up with a friend of ours, Gaia, from New York City. She has a couple of investment properties up here uh, by the Dreams Park. She rents them out uh, when the kids come up and play baseball at the Dreams Park. Anyway, she invited us to go to a church fair over by where she lives. So I can't wait to see her. She's so much fun. It's a beautiful church. Did you see the stained glass there? Yeah. Really pretty. We ran up to the store to get a few little items until I can get my meal plan done. On the way home, I ran in the store and got stuff for dinner tonight. And then after dinner, usually Ken and the kids will help uh, clean up the kitchen. But tonight, they went out and they started working on the garden. We're getting all the compost put down, first layer. 
So I was left with this humongous uh, sink full of dirty dishes. <laughs> and we do zone cleaning. We do the fly lady method. This week is zone two. So I'm gonna tackle those dirty dishes and I'm gonna get my two kitchen sinks polished today, even though I'm really kind of tired. We're gonna tackle that while they're working on the garden. I have two dishwashers <laughs> and a sink full of dirty dishes. been an hour of bleaching the sink out so I'm gonna get it drained. Ken and I do zone cleaning. This week it's zone two. The kitchen. We do the fly lady zone cleaning. Seems to work. So this week every day I'm just gonna take another little task in the kitchen. Today I'm really cleaning out the sinks and bleaching them out and we'll start there. Because the fly lady likes a clean sparkly sink <laughs> and so do I. One sparkling sink, no dirty dishes. Yay! Time to get this other sink clean. It's a big mess. <laughs> Two polished sinks. Yay! There's a bunch of ducks over there. Look at that. All them ducks. Well, we had so much fun with Gaia yesterday, but I need to get to the grocery store. That's first on my list. I got my meal plan ready. We had to go to the DMV to get our driver's license and uh, voter registration and get some of the cars um, licensed, registered. And I thought we we're going to be here all day because in Los Angeles you have to take like a day off from work. We're headed back to town today because when Ken was at Lowe's the other day, he decided to buy what? A trailer. A trailer. And we just, he went over there this morning already and paid for it. And now we went to the DMV and we got it all registered and everything. So now we get to go back and pick it up. We just went to Triple A and Ken picked up a tour book for New York. And then he got one for the state and one for New York City. Because sometimes when you're in New York City, the, the uh, buildings are so high that you don't get reception. And it's kind of weird. So I keep thinking I want to get a city map. Because we have some friends coming in November. And we're going to spend a couple days in New York City. So since we're here, we just went ahead and picked it up. So I was out riding the lawnmower. And a timber wolf comes running by me. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you got pictures. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> yep. And then I ran out of gas. So I'm sitting there on the All scared. <laughs> Call 911. I'm on my lawnmower and the timber wolf is. So which way did he go? He went behind the neighbor's house. Okay, well. Because I got a little bit of gas in the lawnmower. <laughs> you know what? I would do that another day. <laughs> There's always tomorrow. all these turkeys be behind the garage oh my god I heard something I was like oh but what is it oh you guys it scared me 
we're here at CVS. We're gonna get some passport photos taken. We get them uh, taken care of because we're going on that cruise next summer and the cruise line requires us to have our passports for six months prior to embarking. I never heard of such a thing, but apparently that's their policy. So, and I think we need to pick up some medicine too. So we're here at CVS. <laughs> Perfect. So easy. It takes, it takes like two or three minutes. The guy was saying that they make you take your glasses off now. They didn't used to do that, but anyway, there's Ken's. They even cut it out to the two by two size that you need and put it in a little passport for you. Totally easy. It took less than five minutes to get our photos taken, printed, and ready to go. We have to pick up some medicine too. So this was perfect. Look, they have the pumpkins out already. Today I'm gonna to be working on making some marinated chicken cutlets. One thing that I would recommend is making the marinades ahead of time, at least like a day or two ahead of time from uh, cutting all the chicken up so you can break up a big project into a smaller project. I even uh, made the marinades a while back and just stuck them in the freezer. So you can do that too because it just makes this whole process so much easier uh, to have the marinades already prepped. Just a little tip. The first thing I do is I label my bags and put the date on them. I usually cut the chicken breasts into three pieces. And I find it takes the marinade better and it cooks faster on the grill. There we go. And I usually allow one full chicken breast per person. And usually we have leftovers, you know, the kids will take it for lunch, but that's just the rule of thumb how I do it. Sometimes if it's a real small chicken breast, I might just cut it into uh, two chicken cutlets, but I usually try to get three if I can. If I was to just cook a chicken breast on the grill, um, each person would probably take a whole chicken breast as a serving. But doing them this way, it takes the marinade onto the meat better. And I find that I always have leftovers. So it's a economical <laughs> way to, I don't know if it's just psychological, like people think, oh, you know, three pieces of chicken, but it's the same as, amount as a chicken breast. So I don't get it. <laughs> I have six chicken breasts that I cut into chicken cutlets. Uh, two or three pieces per chicken breast depending on the size. I made some chicken shawarma uh, marinade and this will be enough for the four packets. And the nice thing about this is you can design these packets to fit your family size. Then I just pour a fourth of the marinade into each of the chicken packets. This is my food saver and I'm going to show you how I package it. I kind of press it out a little bit and then just line up the seal and close the arm. There's two buttons. There's a vacuum and seal and a seal. The first one, whenever I have liquid in something, I'll push the vacuum and seal. And as soon as it starts to suck up, I'll hit the seal button and it'll close it. Right there, you saw it kind of going up into the bag, so I sealed it. And that's how you seal things that have liquid in it. Then I just pull back a little bit. I like to seal mine twice. The second time, I just hit the seal button 
and it'll put that second seal on it. You can see that it has two seals, so I just do that because I don't want it to leak. <laughs> you can see how nice they stack, and I love that. They're gonna not take up a lot of space in the freezer, and you know, all I need to do is the night before pull whatever I'm gonna cook, let it thaw in the refrigerator, and then it just marinates the chicken, and then you just cook it on the grill. Super easy. Okay, it took me a little over an hour to get all of this done. It was really handy having all the marinades prepared ahead of time. I did eight ginormous packages of tequila lime chicken. This is definitely enough for dinner and then enough to make some salads or fajitas or like two meals out of this here. And then I did four of the teriyaki chicken four of the Thai coconut chicken and four of the chicken shawarma. The Thai coconut chicken can be used to make like oriental chicken salads or you can put some of the meat in um, like a curry. It just it gives so much flavor. I love that one. And then I have one package that is just chicken cutlets. I can use this to make chicken parmesan or whatever. So I have 21 packets in total. They're about $8 a packet, and it's gonna be enough protein to definitely serve our family for dinner, as well as probably a lunch the next day. So that's a pretty good value. And it's not gonna take much space, as you can tell in the freezer, because it's really compact. I managed to get all of that chicken on one shelf. And that was equivalent to 20 of those big family packs of chicken. So that's how efficient it is to uh, do it this way for your freezer. It takes up less space. That's what I like. Ken's already been to Lowe's this morning when I was doing the chicken and picked up a load of mulch because they have these big, huge bags for a dollar. They're having some sale through today. I don't know if it was a Labor Day sale or, or what it was, but he was like, for that price, he's stocking up on mulch. <laughs> he wants to go get another load, so I think I might ride with him. We're back at Lowe's and he's getting more mulch. I think he said it was regularly $5 a bag and today they're having it for a dollar, so good value. I fell asleep on the way over, you guys. <laughs> I'm some co-pilot. Oh my gosh, it's coming along, little by little. We're putting some of this composted mulch down and then we're gonna be putting some composted manure. Sounds like fun, huh? <laughs> I have some laundry going today. Um, and I never, never, ever, complained about doing laundry. <laughs> These photos were a gift from Ken one time. And I tell you what, I have a grateful heart that I have a washer and a dryer. You'll never hear me complain about doing laundry. <laughs> the range was so dirty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was bad. I'm using a little bit of easy off. It was so bad. I'm just going to let that soak for a few minutes. Today I'm going to clean this cooktop. I already sprayed it with Easy Off. So now I just need to polish it up. Hey Cody. much nicer.
We are on the way to the farmer's market. I need to pick up my flowers, see if I can find anything else there that's of interest, but I'm excited. I love, I love Saturday mornings. <laughs> They always have such beautiful flowers. It's a uh, arts farm. And what you do is at the beginning of the season, you it's like a CSA and you pay a fee. And then for the whole season, like from May till um, into the early fall, every week, they have a bouquet ready for you. And they're so fresh, they last forever. These are all the beautiful flowers we have today. Look at that. So unique. A lot of texture. Beautiful. Here's my beautiful bouquet today. Isn't that gorgeous? Love it. last week's flowers here and I'm just going to try to see which ones I can salvage. Maybe put it in a smaller vase. I like to cut these off because they stain everything. dry, some looks pretty good, so I'm just going to play it by ear. Now that I have them all together, I'm going to cut off quite a bit off the bottom at an angle here. And get them in my base. So pretty and just add so much cheer to the kitchen. We are on our way to Willie's farm. Look at the little deer. We're like 10 feet from her and she's just doing her thing. So cute. We are here at our you pick Middlefield Orchard. They just opened their stand um, just this week, so we're pretty excited to be here. Some of their first customers. Willie got his new building open. Awesome. Looks like they're having a wedding over there. Look at all his 
apple trees. They got the the new stand open. Gorgeous. They have some preserves too. Honey. They do their own honey. Uh, Will was telling me that a bear came last year and tore up his hives. I've never seen a squash like this. Oh, for just fall decoration? Yeah. I've never seen anything. It looks like an acorn kind of at the end. I know. It's really <laughs> funky. Do you know the name of this squash? Hubbard. Hubbard squash. Now I've heard that before. Hubbard. Blue Hubbard. Okay. I believe that's what it is. I wouldn't tell you that for 100%, but 65%. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take 65%. We have some new additions to Will's farm. There's a bunch of chicks, and they're right up under mom. <laughs> She's doing a good job. From Middlefield Farm, I purchased four apples, a beautiful heirloom tomato, a squash, and two pounds of honey. 